Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and if you've been watching my videos recently, you know that I've been working on these guys for a long time. I did a lot of experiments, and, but my three wise men are now finally done. Um, I've never done figure sculptures before. I've never done any kind of sculpture that used so many different materials. Um, there's Super Sculpey, there's a Magic Sculpt, and there's my Silky Smooth Air Dry Clay recipe. I've actually had so much fun with these that I've got another project that I'm going to start on a whole lot sooner next time <laughs> for next Christmas. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you about that at the end. But right now I want you to see how I got them from just having some clothes on that with the with the air dry clay to actually having everything finished and ready to go. So so uh, let's let's get started on that. If you saw the other videos, you know that I'd already placed a wire to support the hands and the gifts that they're going to be carrying. So then I added this first time I added just enough super sculpey to form the front edge of the pillow or the cushion that the gift is going to be sitting on and I put the end of the arm going into his sleeve. I thought that it would be best to bake this kind of platform first and then finish the hard part which would be the thumb and the fingers later. I actually think that was a bad idea. So for the other two, I did all of the super sculpey including the cushion and the hands before baking the polymer clay. And then for all of them, before sculpting the thumbs, I set a wooden bead or whichever gift they were going to be carrying on top of the cushion so I'd make sure that I didn't get the thumbs in the way. I took a selfie of myself in my bathrobe holding something and then I used that photo as a model for the wise man's hands. I, I did not sculpt them with very much detail. In fact, I didn't do the fingers at all. I'm really hoping that nobody will turn them upside down and see that part. Now I'm, I'm using a wooden bead for the jar that this first guy is holding. So I put that uh, back on the Super Sculpey just one more time just to make sure it fits. And then after the hands were all smoothed off with a little bit of baby oil, I baked the clay again. And like I said for the other two, I went ahead and did the cushion and the hands together. But I did make sure in each time that I was leaving enough room for the gifts on top of the cushion. Now while the clay was in the oven for this first guy, I finished putting his jar together. I found a couple of really small buttons and I stuck them together with a dab of epoxy clay and I also covered the holes on the top of the button with Magic Sculpt. Then I made a ball out of the epoxy clay and stuck it on top of the wooden bead. I put the buttons on top pressing, pressing them down to make sure that they stuck really well. And then I made another tiny little ball of epoxy clay for the handle. Then when both the uh, epoxy clay and the polymer clay were cured, I stuck, the, I stuck this new jar onto the cushion with a dab of epoxy clay. For the next guy's gift, I cut the cap of a felt tip pen in half. And then I snipped the clip thingy shorter. I don't know what that thing's called. And this is going to be the handle of a tall vessel. I stuck the cap onto a small foam ball temporarily just just so I could test the size of it and it was way too tall it was going to be covering up the guy's face so I took the ball off and I covered the lower part of my new vessel with Super Sculpey with just a little bit of the cap showing at the top then I created a pour spout with Magic Sculpt it didn't stick very good <laughs> so I did put it in the oven while I was curing the Super Sculpey at the bottom of this uh, little vessel and the the spout fell off <laughs> so I did have to stick it back on later but it's okay it's on pretty good now. I did have to take it downstairs and spray it with a uh, with just some spray paint because I was pretty sure that acrylic paint was not going to stick to that plastic cap. Now for this last gift I found some plastic molds and it looked like they were a really nice size for a box to put the gold in but they're too big so I cut one of them in half I taped the two pieces together and then I covered them with the magic sculpt. After that was on there kind of smooth I pressed a silicone washcloth into the clay to create a design that looks kind of like mosaic. I really like the way that came out. Now after all of the cushions, the hands, and the gifts were all done, this is how they looked. The next step was to paint the box with gold paint. I'm using folk art paint for almost all of this project. Then I painted everybody's clothes with folk art vintage white. 
it's actually the same color as the dried air dry clay, which is exactly what I wanted. The clay darkened a little bit after being in the oven so many times. So this cleaned them up a little bit without changing the color. And I really like the way that came out. I found a skin tone uh, formula for the Middle Eastern people. Um, I've got a book that has a lot of formulas in it and I'm going to put a link to it down below. Every time I paint or sculpt a person, I go find this book because it's been really helpful. And if you do any kind of figures on it, you're gonna wanna see it. I'll, like I said, I'll put a link to it down below. The colors that I used were white, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and black. I mixed them together until it looked reasonably people-like but still really dark and then I mixed in some golden glazing liquid so that it would be transparent but without getting runny. I brushed this over the faces, the hands, and the feet and then I made the mixture darker again by mixing in more of the color and I used this over the gold box And over the turbans and beards that I was thinking that the dark color would bring out the textures and folds in the beards and the turban but um, I really don't think that was necessary so you might actually want to skip that part um, at the end of the video you'll see why then I needed a color that looked really nice with the ribbon that I'm going to use later around this, this one guy who has a cloak on. So I did this by using cool blue, is what uh, folk art calls it. It's really cerulean blue for most of us. I added uh, white to it and then I added just a little bit of glazing liquid to keep it from drying out too fast. Then I brushed it onto the this gentleman's cloak really, really thinly so some of the white is going to show through. For, for the front of his cloak, or the inside actually, I added a drop of water to the color so it's going to be even lighter and I brushed that on. When it was dry, I mixed another color. This time I used ultramarine blue with glazing liquid and I brushed it on very, very thinly because I wanted a whole lot of the cool blue to show through. I brushed some of this darker blue into the creases between the cloak and the white robe uh, just to make sure that the, that connection would stand out just a little bit better. I got some of it on the white robe, of course, but I did clean that up later. Now, the turbans, this, this is what I meant about um, the color brown that I put on the turban. It needed like three or four coats of the vintage white before they started looking like clean turbans so the the brown just kept showing through and these guys <laughs> you know they, they probably have a whole retinue of people following them along to make sure that they don't have any dirty clothes and a, a dirty turban really wasn't going to work so um i just kept i just kept adding more and more white to it i would do something else and then i would come back to the turbans add another coat and i did finally uh, end up with the turbans that i was happy with but i'm just not sure that i needed that brown on there in the end it didn't hurt anything but um yeah it just made things um, take a little bit longer I painted the spout and the handle of the oil vessel with silver paint again it was uh, folk art and then I used their dragonfly glaze color changing top coat over all of the gifts to give them a nice sparkle. I don't actually see any color changing. Well, I guess I do. If you get really close, I guess you can see it. But it does give them a, a nice sparkle and I really like the way it came out. I'm not, I'm not sure it, if I didn't have some here <laughs> that I bought on a whim, I'm not sure I would run out and buy some, but I do like the way it looks. I painted the, the two of the beards white. I painted one of them black. Uh, I, the black beard got a little bit of white on the edges and one of the white beards got a strip of black down the middle. Um, again, I gave the turbans one more coat of that vintage white, which almost completely covered the brown by now. And then I threaded the, the ribbon that I bought on Etsy. Uh, one of them is from Turkey and one of them is from Italy. I can't remember which one is which. They don't have anything at all to do with Zoroastrian priests, but I just really thought they needed something to, to brighten them up and make them look a little bit more like the three wise men that we're used to. So, so they're all finished, now, except for two more things. Um, the bases are not done. I'm 
I'm not quite sure on how I'm going to finish them, but I do think I'll put some of the Magic Sculpt uh, really very, very thinly along the edges because this is plywood and it looks a little strange. Um, just want to smooth it off a little bit and then I'll paint um, maybe both the top and the, the edges. I haven't decided what color yet though. If you have any ideas of what, what that should be, black, gold what tell me what you think down below and the other thing that i need to do for sure is to take these scarves back off i, I didn't attach them uh, firmly yet i'm, I'm going to use just a little bit of uh, hot glue just right at the back to make sure that they don't go away but i'm going to take them off now and i'm going to cover everything except the sparkly bits with a matte acrylic varnish i'm going to use the deco art um, ultra matte varnish. Um, I'm hoping that this clay portion will not get any shine on it at all because right now to me it looks like a uh, wool and I just really like it. I don't want to change it. I don't want to add any shine to it at all but of course uh, the sparkly parts they're going to stay shiny. <laughs> Now I got these done for solstice, <laughs> but if you wanted to start now, I don't think you'd have quite enough time to finish them before Christmas. But I am going to put a blog post together with an easy step-by-step -step instruction so that you'll be able to make some for next year. I should have started it a little bit sooner too, <laughs> but oh well, um, maybe next time I'll, I'll remember to do that just to show you what I want to do. I <laughs> I made this plaster cast. It was a clay sculpture and then I cast it in plaster. Um, I did this like 10 years ago. Gosh, maybe older than that. I can't remember, but I keep, keep it around because I really like it. But there are a lot of flaws. Um, uh, Joseph looks like he's standing in a hole. <laughs> this is really short. Um, the, the donkey has real problem. But for some reason, I really, really like this and I wanted to recreate it in the round, but I was afraid to start out with Mary and Joseph this time because I haven't done any figure sculptures before. But I think that if I remember, I am going to do these uh, for next year. Definitely going to add uh, the sheep and the, and the little cat that's on top of them. Let me show you here a little bit closer. Well, I'll have to make some changes, obviously, to this design, but I've kept it around for a long time because, obviously, I do like it. If I get started early enough, it might actually get done for next Christmas. We'll see. Now, in the meantime, <laughs> go make something and come back and visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.